Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. Welcome to the new video series which is on rhinoceros and how we use it in architecture and interior design. Uh, so when you open Rhino, when you open a new file, uh, basically you see the template files. Let's start here, let's see what are the differences. So Rhino goes with large objects and small objects. Uh, if you want to know the difference, just click on each of them and on the right side here, you see that there is a tolerance. If we switch to like meters, uh, the tolerance is, is on 0 0.01 meters, which is one centimeter, right? So um, I usually prefer to go with meters, but I usually prefer to have three numbers after the point right because then I know the amount of millimeters there so I want to go with this one okay open it brought the new template then I can go to the tools and I can go to options and we do have the units here as well right so usually um, many people suggest to go with three numbers after the point when they go with meters that's because you know the amount in millimeters right uh, if you prefer to go with feet then you can adjust it to fractional or feet and inches from here why this option is grayed out uh, because you need to set this on feet then you can go with feet and inches and then this is uh, the tolerance that you can assign it's from here right so uh, I want to go back to meters and I want to go with three decimal places uh, which means 0 0.001 uh, sorry I need to change this to meters okay that all looks good okay uh, next we're gonna talk about the command bar the toolbars which are here and some other information which are at the bottom so how about I just start with the command box uh, so basically anything that you want to draw you can use uh, the option from here or you can type it here or you can find the same options if you go to the correct tabs on the top right so usually I prefer to type the options that's a little bit faster right however for instance if I want to have line I should type the whole line for it to begin if you are an AutoCAD person and you are already using uh, AutoCAD shortcuts it, it might be much easier for you to use the same shortcuts in Rhino so this is what I'm gonna do how do I know the shortcuts in Rhino I need to go to the file to properties and we do have the aliases here right which are basically the shortcuts and also show you the keyboard right so some of the things you can just bring them using the keyboard items such as like F1 for help F2 for command history F3 for properties and so on some other items are here under aliases right and you see there are already some shortcuts for instance CP is for copy if you are familiar with AutoCAD shortcuts it's very easy to import them here and add them to your aliases so I want to go to import I want to bring the shortcuts AutoCAD shortcuts notice that this is a text file I want to open it and all the shortcuts will be added to my aliases okay okay now if I just type L here it knows that I mean line if I type M it knows that uh, I mean move right so if you are um, a cat person this is the most straightforward way to go with right uh, if you want to know what other commands you used in past you can just hit F2 on the keyboard and it will bring the command history and you can just use like one of the options you can copy them from here and paste them again and just bring the whole thing but if you don't want to use the command box you can just use the toolbars from here right so we also have the line here and you notice that there are toolbars inside toolbars right sometimes there are even toolbars inside toolbars inside toolbars and it keeps going like that uh, you can move them out you can uh, just close it and it's going to be there uh, you can even move the toolbars if you want but then if you want to put it back and you cannot easily put it back right you can do this just go to tools go to toolbar layout and you're gonna 
go with three star defaults right so if your toolbars and everything is just messed up you can go to tools you can go to a toolbar layout and I'm gonna go with restore defaults it says that you need to restart the Rhino so it's gonna restore it I'm gonna say okay okay and okay I want to reset Rhino open it and close it again and I'll be back uh, so I opened Rhino again uh, it's important to double check the units again options units I need to change this back to meter, three decimal places, OK. And I also want to double check my aliases from here. Uh, it seems good. I can check, for instance, if I have L for line, that means, yes, that's what I was looking for. Uh, okay. uh, the four views here are called the viewports. If you double click on any of them, it's going to just maximize that one, right? Uh, so, for instance, I can go to the top view, maximize this one, and we have more options here at the bottom, right? So, for instance, if I want to draw a line, if I want to start it from exactly 0, 0, 0, I can turn on the grid snap from here, and now I can just uh, draw something. The reason you see that it moves in horizontal and vertical uh, sides is because the ortho is on, I can turn it off. Right, so the grid snap is here, uh, O snap, smart track. I usually prefer to have the smart track on. Sometimes it's easier to find the O snaps when the smart track is on. And notice that O snaps are here. You have to click on the O snap so they're gonna be active. Right. Usually we prefer to have end maybe the perpendicular, maybe the midpoint, and based on what you need, you can select any of them that you need. Another thing that we have here at the bottom are the layers. If I left click on the layers, you see that we have only one layer here, which is default, and we have the layers over there. Uh, so we can always change the uh, layer of the object through here or directly from here. We're going to talk about layers in depth later. We also have properties. So when you have an object, when you click on that object, under the properties menu, it's going to show all the information for that one single object. So I drew a line here, and you see that it says the type is open curve, uh, the layer is default, etc., etc. So let's say I want to draw one cube here. Another thing that is good to know is about the graphic display options. If I click on this arrow here, I can change it to shaded, to rendered, to ghosted, technical, and even artistic. So that is controlled from here. I'm going to leave it on wireframe for now. Uh, let's also talk a little bit about zoom. Of course, you can use the wheel button of the mouse. Uh, we also have very interesting options here. For instance, this option is for zoom extents. Uh, if I left click, it's gonna do the zoom extent on the active viewport. If I right click here, it actually uh, considers the zoom extent for all four views. So these are called like dual functions because if you go with uh, either left or right click of the mouse, two things will happen each time. Uh, we also have like zoom window here, so if I draw a window, it's going to zoom on those objects. And notice that we do have undo, redo here, which is the same as Control z and Control y Also, we do have undo, zoom, and redo zoom, right? So I can go back, and uh, it's going to undo the, the zoom, or I can redo it from here. So this icon is different than this one. Uh, you know that for undo redo you can use Control Z, Control Y. For undo redo zoom, you can use the home and the end key of the keyboard. So I can go with home to go back in the zooms, or I can go with the end to actually move forward. I can do it in other views too. Home, end, or go backwards and redo zoom. Another useful item here is uh, if you select one item and you just want to zoom on that one item, you can actually do it from here for one view or right click on this icon to zoom on the selected objects in all four viewports. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about transform, selection, 
and visibility.